What is up everyone? Before this video officially begins, I wanted to thank everybody. I just surpassed 5,000 subscribers, so thank you so much to everybody who subscribed to my channel. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, it's an awesome feat. I can't wait to continue to grow. I never thought that I would reach 5,000 subs when I started this channel. Uh, I kind of did it just for fun, and now it's turned into something small, but it's been growing very well. So again, I just wanted to thank everybody for 5,000 subs. Now let's get right into the video. What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel, and thank you for watching another video. Today we're going to be covering the S3 again. I'm going to be doing something that I did in a previous video with my Mini Cooper and that's going over like hidden features, tips and tricks, but this time is going to be about the S3. A lot of these things are also going to pertain to the A3 and the RS3. So I don't know how many I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover the ones that I know off the top of my head that uh, I've come to learn. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. All right guys, so we're gonna start with the front of the car first. We're gonna come up to the front bumper and there is like a trim style piece right here. This is actually a headlight washer. So you have one on the driver's side and you also have one on the passenger side right here. So I'm gonna go inside the car, show you how to activate that. I have a second camera also set up so that you guys can see when that pops out and sprays the headlight. So we're gonna come into the car. You're gonna need to have your headlights on. I'm gonna put the car into accessory mode. Do not leave it in auto because it won't work in auto only when the headlights are on. And you're gonna pull the stock back, like if you're gonna clean your windshield, like so. And now we're gonna come back outside the car. And as you can see, I'll show you the other angle from the other camera, but now the headlights are all wet. All right, so we're gonna stick to the outside of the car. We can actually make the windows go down and the sunroof pop open with just the key fob. So get your key fob. What we're gonna do is unlock, then you're gonna hold the unlock button. And you see the windows are going down, like so. And the sunroof is now popped open and you could do that just with your key fob. Next, we can unlock and lock the car without the key using just the door handle. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna take my key fob, I'm just gonna lock the car for good measure. So putting your key in your pocket, we can walk up to the car, to the door handle, you're gonna put your hand around the back here. And as you can see, the door is now open. So all you gotta do is put your hand behind the handle and it'll recognize it and to lock the car, there is a little groove right here, like a little rectangle cutout. You're gonna put your finger there, hold it, and the car locks. So again, we could just unlock it like so, open the door, and then with our finger right here on the handle, it'll lock. So we're gonna be focusing on the windshield wipers now. As you can see, the wipers don't move at all, and they're blocked by the hood. Now you could still change the wiper from the arm here. It's gonna be a little more difficult, but there's a way to put the wipers in a service mode so that the wipers come up and it's actually a lot more convenient to service them and change them rather than maybe taking it to a shop or a dealer because you can't. So basically the way you do that is this. We're gonna go inside the car. And we're gonna be using the wiper stock again. So we're gonna put the car into accessory. Just turn the power on, then we're gonna turn it off. You're gonna hold this down for like two or three seconds and now you can see that the wipers have popped up and now you're able to pull this up like so and easily be able to change each one. And now when you put them back down, you can either push them back down into place like so and you could pull them back up because now it's in service mode or let's say you leave them up and you go back into the car and you turn it on and you activate the wipers again like that it'll complete the cycle on the wipers and put it back into the correct position. Next, we're gonna focus on the inside of the car now. We're gonna start with the steering wheel. If you see right here on the buttons on the steering wheel itself, there's like a little asterisk star button right here. And when I click on it, it'll pull up my drive select modes that Audi comes with. So you have the comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual, but you can actually customize this button to do other things as well. So let me show you that. So we're gonna go into the menu right here. We're gonna go up to vehicle and then we're gonna go into vehicle settings, and then we're gonna go to right here, it says here, steering wheel button. And there you can see that I have selected the Audi drive select mode. You can also choose voice guidance, the map, 
uh, traffic messages, and you can change from your media to your radio with that same button. So you can have these five different options for your personalized button on your steering wheel. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the climate control. So as you can see here, each the driver and the passenger have control over their temps on each side. So if the passenger wants it to be a little hotter, a little cooler, they can do that and the driver as well. But if you want, you can actually sync both of these to work together. So let me put the air up. For example, we have the AC on and let's say I'm being too lazy that I don't want to have to touch both knobs to control the temperature for the entire car. You can hold the auto button for about three seconds. And now what it's going to do the climate control is synced. As you can see, I'm just using this one knob here and is controlling both temperatures on the driver and the passenger side, which is really cool. Uh, and if you ever want to turn this off, you could just, you touch this button here and now it's solo again. So now it's individual. But if, again, if you want to sync it, you press the auto button for like three seconds and now the climate control is synced together and to turn it off, just press and move this dial and now they're all out of sync. So we're gonna be focusing on the headlight switch once again. And if you could see right here on the left, there's two buttons here. There's like a little lamp button, and then you have on top here a like rain or high beam kind of style button. Now this one right here on the top is only going to be available if you have a facelift model. If you have the pre-facelift, you're only going to have this button right here. So to clarify, this right here is going to be a rear fog light. And this right here is going to be kind of like a fog light slash um, bad weather light. It actually gives more illumination to the headlight in the front. There's a second light that pops up. So let me show you how that works. So we're going to turn on the headlights. And then first we're going to click the rear fog. And now you have this light here on the inside, which is your rear fog on the driver and the passenger side that illuminate. Now be careful with that because it might blind some people if uh, they're driving kind of close behind you, which they shouldn't be, but it could have blind somebody pretty bad in the nighttime. And then we're going to be turning this light on here and let's go to the headlights. And now as you can see, right here, this bulb on the bottom is now on too. So you have your main headlight up here, you have your LED strip there, you have your side marker, and now you have this extra, like I said, it kind of works as like a fog light that you also have as an option if it's very cloudy, if it's very foggy, etc. Next thing, and I touched on this in another video that I made about this car in the past, is launch control. If you have an S3, it comes with a factory launch control. Now this works for other Volkswagens and other Audis as well, but only with the DSG transmission. So if you have a manual transmission, forget about it, you won't have this from the factory, but these cars do have factory launch control. And the way to activate them is like this. You turn off traction control. You're going to put the parking brake down. You're gonna put the car into sport. Make sure that the car's up to temp or else it won't activate. Left foot on the brake, and then you're going to push the gas all the way to the floor. Like so. It'll hold it at 4,000 RPMs, and we'll do it one more time. There you go. It sounds really cool. Obviously, it's good when you're going to the track to actually be able to launch the car properly. So these cars do come with factory launch control, and that's the way you can activate them. These cars are also equipped with an electronic parking brake. So if you push down, it'll disable the parking brake, and you pull up, it'll enable the parking brake. But there's actually a way for when you go to actually go out and drive that you don't have to press this button at all. Because sometimes you might forget because you don't have the big handle in the middle, or you don't have the big... Uh, pedal the extra one that you push down and there's a parking brake there So you might sometimes forget if you're not used to it So this car has kind of I guess is like a safety feature or just kind of a hidden thing where the car will protect you So you don't drive with the parking brake on so basically if Right now I have the parking brake enabled so if I put my seatbelt on And I'm gonna go out for a drive and I forget that the parking brake is on when I put the car in drive it's still enabled right when I tap on the gas, it'll disable it and let me go off and drive. Let me do that again. So parking brake is on, we're in park. If I put the car in drive, the brake is still on. Once I tap the gas, not touching anything, it'll disable the parking brake and the car will start to move. So that is kind of, like I said, it might be like a safety feature that'll allow you not to burn up your 
um, electronic parking brake. So I'm sure most A3, S3, and RS3 owners know this already, but I bet there is a few select people that might not know, and that's that these cars come equipped with Apple CarPlay. If you see this little USB port right there, you take your phone charger and you put the cable in, the phone's going to begin charging, and this is going to turn into an Apple CarPlay screen now. So you could go to your Spotify, you could go to your Maps, you could go to your calls. If somebody texts you, it'll pop up on the screen here. So it's really cool. So if you guys didn't know that, just by connecting your phone charger into this USB port here, it'll activate the Apple CarPlay. Unfortunately, these cars don't come with wireless CarPlay. They do sell like a little adapter that you can get, but it is kind of pricey that you'll be able to uh, use the CarPlay that way. But just having the cable in, it'll charge your phone and it'll activate it. So it's pretty cool. Anyways, guys, that's going to conclude the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you know any other features of the A3, the S3, the RS3, please let me know down in the comments below. These are some of the stuff that I've learned over the past six months of ownership of the car, things that people have told me, uh, things that I figured out. So uh, it's really cool to be sharing that with you guys. Also, again, thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. I appreciate it so much. You guys have no idea how big that milestone is for me. I actually bought something for the car and kind of like a congratulations to like the channel. Um, that's pretty expensive that hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy. I'll be installing that next week. So that will probably be coming in a video as well, probably by the end of the week, I think. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Uh, it's gonna make the S3 a hundred times better and I can't wait. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.